The great thing about coming to CPPCon is you get to see many, many interesting people and many interesting problems that are solved. I just saw it from the slides. So um, the modules, whenever we have one module that imports another, it creates a dependency in the build order. Um, because when it compiles the first module, it generates an IFC, which will be consumed when the next module is compiled. But we can also use it to generate C++ at compile time and write it into the next module. Why not also generate CPP2, then in another step convert it into C++ and write it to the next module. We can also generate a GLSL shader, and let's also open the calculator just because we can. So this line will open the calculator at compile time. This one will generate an interface, an enum class, inject some string, create a GLSL and extract and a function to iterate over the data members. This is the CPP code that will be compiled and another thing. So let me build it all. Wait for it. The calculator is open. And it generated plenty of code. As you see, all this code exists here. It didn't exist before. I should have shown it that it didn't exist, but just trust me. Um, and in main.cpp, we have all the code that uses the code that didn't exist before. And here it generated also a, um, a GLSL uh, shader. Now, if I run it, it will print the data members of the struct. And if I go to shader toy and paste the shader, it will show it. Now, if I hope the shader is generated, I have here a, a file. That, okay, I, I overloaded the operators to create a DSL that generates an AST, which will generate a GLSL shader. And these two lines will find the um, color nodes in the AST and change the color. So now I'll just need to... Um, build, and when it will finish build, it will also generate the new shader at compile time. Yeah, it finished, so um, we find the... I copied the new generated shader, paste it, run, and different colors. Okay, how, how is it all working? Um, so uh, first it does input validation, so it can check that the string is an identifier or that it is a valid keyword. Then it um, converts everything, all the compile time values, types, contents, and everything into strings, and use them to format two compile time strings. One is the path to the module, and another is the content of the module. Then in between the build system and the compiler, I have a pro compiler proxy, which listens to the output of the compiler. Um, how do I redirect to the compiler proxy? A single line of CMake code to change the path of the compiler. And in the folder of the compiler proxy, I have um, a path to the actual compiler. Then when I find some output detected, um, the output of the compiler, I can write a file, call the system function to open the calculator, inject, um, transpile it into um, CPP2 to CPP1. And yeah, this is it.